to work on the hull it's a it's a long long work it's a long process we need to scratch all the old layers of the anti-falling so we noticed that there was a blue one which is the traditional anti-falling and a green one underneath which is a primer and we don't know if it's epoxy or not it's kind of harder to take off so we will scratch all the layers and put the hull right on the on the gel coat the advantage of doing that is that we can see and inspect all the surface of our hull so we could see if there are any old scratches or old reparation done and from that know how we will protect our hull this is a very harsh piece of work and it's very very long to do scratch every inches on the hull and sand all the surface afterwards it's well you're just happy when it's done After three days of scratching and sanding, we made something like half of the boat, maybe 60%. It's a it's very, very long job and it's a harsh work. But anyway, we are happy because uh, so far so good. For now, the port side is almost all white because of the gel coat. We still have a lot of work to do starboard. The rudder is as well done, well, halfway. And uh, this is the fourth day. There is sun. Actually, it's nice because we had a couple of rainy days and when it's raining, you cannot scratch and sand the hole, of course. But now we're ready to take back the, the job. We proceed in two steps and two teams. One is scraping the old anti-falling while the other is sanding the rest of the green epoxy. After a while, we switch. Moreover, we use our size difference to access different parts of the hurl. As Valerie is tall, he's doing the top parts and I'm good for the lower spaces. So we're still scratching and sanding the, the hull. The position to work underneath the hull is the most complicated position and it's not comfortable at all. But we still have to scratch and sand this part of the hull anyway. So it takes a lot of time. It seems like we almost finish it because the main hull is now white on the gel coat. But in fact, I think it will take us I don't know, maybe a couple of more days, even three or four days to finish because the part underneath it's so hard to scratch. It is also long to work under the hull because every time my back is hurting a little bit more and a little bit quicker. 
just as arms, shoulders, neck, every part of my body gets painful. Today it's the seventh day of scratching and sanding the boat. We finally see the end of the work. It's a very windy day, but still we can finish sanding. So we're back to work. I'm not gonna lie to you. This work is one of the longest, harshest, most depressing, less intellectual and basically the worst one's gonna do to get its underwater hull all checked and cleaned. But at the very end, and not a minute before, the satisfaction is huge. Nine days. It took us nine full days, two scrapers, eight blades, a bag full of protections for eyes, ears, mouth, nose and hands, two senders and countless of sending paper disc. But eventually, we made it. The next day, we welcome a good rainy day. We get some rest, have a nice meal, and work on editing our videos. Today we're having chicken with lemon and red peppers. And to get along with it, some french As we told you when we first visited Ohio, that she was missing a helm. The searching work has been long because of the specific shape of our helm centerpiece. It was of course the less common on the market. So when we found one with a good shape and at less than a day trip away, we didn't think twice and went for it. On our way to pick up our new helm, we made a quick stop at the regional natural park of Camargue. It is a protected area for a wide biodiversity living in these salt marshes. Among lots of others, the main and most famous wildlife here are birds. of the natural park in the Camargue. This is quite unusual because there, there's a lighthouse right there. And it's not like a usual lighthouse, like guiding the boats um, in the sea to, avoid, to prevent them to, to hit rocks because we're just in the middle of land actually. So there's like lakes and like not deep water at all and no boats here so i don't really know what kind of uh, lighthouse it is why they build it but uh, it's nice and it's uh, it's funny to find it here When we arrived in Port de Cats, at about two and a half hours away from Ohio, the wind has calmed down. That offers such a lovely winter day. And now that we just purchased our new helm, we are quite happy. We are 
on the way back to the boat with the helm. Yes, it is with us now. We finally just there. We finally found a helm for Orion. So next step would be to attach it in the cockpit and hopefully it will fit Yes. It fits perfectly. We wish we get a larger helm as this boat usually wears one 20 to 40 centimeters bigger. But given the difficulty we had to find one with the good centerpiece, we are thrilled anyway. It's okay. But it's small. But it's okay. Now that the hull is freed from its old paint, we stay under the boat work, moving forward to prepare and remove the gear. The first step was to find an appropriate ratchet and sockets. We have nine bolts hanging the keel tied up with nine nuts. The first one has a diameter of 36 mm, so that one was okay. But the eight others have a 50 mm of diameter, and for such big nuts, we had to shop in the truck section. To the bilges in some cases there wasn't enough room to fit the sockets so we needed to remove a little amount of fiberglass that will be a sanding and painting work later on Removing a keel is a stressful step, especially when you had never done it before. And it was the first time for both of us. For each bolt, we are releasing the grip of their nuts and making sure that each and every one of them can be removed, so they won't stuck during the keel drop-off. Valérie wants to make sure we don't face any interferences during the maneuver. The Sika glued between the bottom of the hurl and the top of the keel is old. We suppose it will come easily, but we can't be sure. The nuts and stainless steel plates on the top of the bolt into the bilge are set up since probably the first time the keel has been tied up to the boat when she was built. When we got the boat, we had a quick look. These nuts look like being in very good condition. There were no apparent corrosion. 
but you never know until you try and unscrew them for good. Almost ready, though we wish dropping off the rudder at the same time as the keel, so we are removing every part we need to access its holding system, especially the rudder stock located right above the rudder tube. Still in the cockpit, we are trying to remove the, the rudder and we still have a couple of issues, especially on the tube that hang the rudder in place. Last night we, we managed to remove almost all the tube and the rudder was maybe 10 centimeters from the bottom. We had a, a little, a small part on, on the top of this tube that, that, that was stuck. There's like a ring and the tube has to go through the ring and we noticed that on the top of the tube above the ring the metal was not with the good shape and we don't know why exactly maybe someone tried to take it off already and just hit it with a hammer or something and the the shape was is not good at all now It's almost dark now. We've been working all day to prepare the remove of the kill and as well the rudder because since the travel lift is going to come and lift the boat up, we, we wish that we take off the kill and the rudder at the same time. For the kill, we removed all the nuts today, so at least it's one good thing done. And on the second hand, we had to deal with the rudder and it did give us a very very harsh time today so we tried almost everything we knew we took some information uh, from from friends we hit it very hard with the hammer and we we tried many different kind of things to make it go down and it still didn't want to go down so now we're trying one last thing the it's put some white vinegar with very hot water, boiling water, just splash it on the top of the rudder column to make it go down. I bet you don't pretty much hear me, but uh, I will subtitle. The main problem is located here, as 
it doesn't move. This column actually should get down f inside this part and it's it kind of is stuck. Okay, this is it. Okay, so this ring is finally off. Okay, so it is night <laughs> again and we finally make it. The rudder is down. It was, uh, it was a long job, but we're happy because tomorrow we'll have to take off the kill. So we'll have the travel lift to do that and lift up the boat so we can remove the kill. It's going to be a difficult task I think as well we, we don't know yet if it's going to to be easy not easy middle hard we don't know yet at least we have the rudder down so this is a good first step okay see you tomorrow for the rest once again thank you all for watching this video these steps were so important into the boat work we are getting through to get Ohio ready to sail but the road has just begun and we are grateful to manage to share this with you. Don't miss our next episode when we will be dropping off our old keel and catch on with some other boatworks too. We we'll let you see and be pleased to read your comments. Don't forget to like and share this week's video. You can always subscribe to our YouTube channel Selling Oreo and support us a bit more by becoming a Patreon. You can also have a look at our website to reach more info about us. You'll find the link right below the video. Cheers!